structures that can bring down costs. You haven't addressed that. And that's the tragedy. Restoring confidence is absolutely vital to our recovery. People won't invest if they're fearful. And people are fearful. Next year, you yourself forecast that investment will fall, private investment will fall by 40%. That's a catastrophic figure. It illustrates that people simply don't have confidence that you and your government have a strategy that is bringing this economy on a road where they can see ahead where we're heading, that they can have a credible belief in what you're doing for us. And thus we can't break the cycle if people like that, investors, families, don't have the confidence to go out and spend. And that is the, tr the position we're in. And I think, you know, you need more than vacuous claims that the worst is over. You need to see action, a strategy, a plan. That's what people want to see. And that is the void that has been left unaddressed. Frontline services have been hit hard in this budget. And that's because you weren't willing to face up to the much more radical change that was demanded by your own McCarthy report. That's the incredible part of it. It wasn't, it wasn't outsiders, it was yourself commissioning a report that demanded that you would address issues. We were to have the rationalisation, 43 rationalisations were identified by the McCarthy process. And not one of them had been taken on. Not one of them. And I suppose it's not surprising, because in last year's budget, you announced there were to be 30 rationalisations involving 41 agencies. And what happened? Half of them haven't been touched at all. The total saving to date from those rationalisations is, wait for it, 3.4 million. Less than 1.5% of the budgets that were involved in those agencies. You have failed to create the tools to make rationalisation happen. You have failed to even be able to move staff from where they're needed, for, to, from where they weren't needed to where they are needed. You don't have a system for doing that. You don't have the tools to give managers the power to actually rationalise the way they do their business. You've left it to the 11th hour to try and address those changes. And that's why we come back to this budget and see that the focus has been on the front line and not on the, cha the changes that we should have seen. And these changes are going to be hard on people. You're asking people on the drug refund to go up uh, to pay 120 a month now. At the last general election, that was just 85. You're asking people to pay, people on medical cards, to pay 50 cent per prescription. Even in the UK, where that was introduced, they exempted the lowest, the lowest one third of the income profile. It's not patients who decide what's prescribed on their medical chit. It's the doctors who decide that. And pretending that, you know, by asking patients on the very lowest of income, these are patients on 180 euros, according to the means test, a week. You're asking them to come up with up to 10 euros a month. That's not going to save us on our, our, our drugs bill. To save us on our drugs bill, you have to be radical about using generic drugs. You have to look at new prescribing practices. That's how you change our drugs bill, not going to the weakest in our community and asking them to, to, to contribute. You've asked carers who are saving the state a fortune to take an eight euros fifty cut in the amount of money they get. Now where's the fairness in that? You're asking widows to take that cut. You're asking people who are invalids to take that cut, simply because they're under the age of, of 65. Now why weren't those people exempted? to pr protect, I mean, carers are actually, the value of a work of a carer for which you're going to pay 212 euros runs to 1,000 euros a week. That's what a carer means to our community, means to a family. And it doesn't mean just that monetary saving, it means that patient is in an environment that they want to be in, getting care that they want to get. You, you needed more imagination. You've hit people who are down. The ch hitting of child, child payments is very short-sighted because it is the young families who are borne the brunt of this recession. They are the ones who paid huge excess prices for houses in the upswing. And they're the ones now with negative equity. We know that 35,000 of them face repossessions. We know that there are 350,000 families in negative equity. And the gesture that you have made to them is inadequate, it is pathetic. Where is the work of the government group that was to see us address these problems? We were told in the government programme that the, this was going to be a priority, but it hasn't been reflected in the budget. What other group is more important than 
families who are under threat of losing their homes. We expected to see that. We expected to see the victims of this recession addressed and their needs addressed. Yes, you've provided for 26,000 job placements for the, three, three, the, the 420,000 who are out of work. That will be welcome. But far more welcome would be a radical economic plan to drive employment growth in this country. Our economic plan to do that builds to a potential of 175,000 jobs after four years. That's the sort of vision we needed. That's the sort of commitment that was possible for you to take on. And you have, you have just cut short and short-changed people who ought to have been at the heart of, of this budget. Time and again we've heard former Minister Cowan when he was Minister of Finance and again as Taoiseach talking about the seismic shift of reforming the public service. We've had all the rhetoric, but it has produced nothing. Today we see the evidence of that, that out of a, a provision, the McCarthy set out cuts that were to be achieved, that could be achieved in the social welfare area, where everyone said, you know, there was a shock and a sharp intake of breath. Surely we're not going to re be reduced to doing that. And areas that didn't involve social welfare, the system, the spending system, efficiencies and rationalisation. You've adopted none of the rationalisation. But what's worse is you've adopted 42% of the savings on the social welfare side, but only 25% in the areas of the non-social welfare. That was the difficult area, the, the area that required ministers to apply a bit of imagination, to, uh, to actually invest their intelligence in changing the way they ran their system, to get more with less. And you, sh you shirked that responsibility to, re to make those reforms. And as a result, it is the front line. It is those low paid in the public service who will pay from the very first euro. It is people on, on social welfare who will pay who are, if they're not uh, over 66. You've asked them to, 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 to pony up because you weren't willing to confront the sort of change that we needed. We should have seen a government, as the McCarthy report came in, adopting each proposal as it came driving a rationalisation programme from the outset, sitting down and negotiating with unions from the very start and saying this is part of a job strategy, appealing for solidarity from all working in the public service as well as the private sector to create an employment strategy. Instead, you've left, you've disastrously mishandled those negotiations and you've left us with a public service that is angry and demoralised. And that is, is a tragedy, because most people that I talk to in the public service know that costs in the public service are going to have to be cut if we are to trade our way out of this, if we are to rebuild a strong employment-creating economy. They know that, but they want an appeal and they want to be part of a strategy that shows solidarity to something bigger that's been created, a real employment strategy. But you didn't go to them with an employment strategy that they could believe in, that they could see that their sacrifice was going to be contributing to a bigger picture, an agenda of change, not just in the public service, but reinvesting the, in, in the economy, reinventing the economy. Equally, you went to them with a demand for pay cuts alone. But where was the wider strategy to get round down costs? Where was the commitment to confront boardroom pay, the rip-off that we see in our shops every day? Where was the commitment to drive down utility prices, to freeze government charges? Where was the commitment to cut rents, commercial rents that are now killing businesses by the day? You needed to show that the effort that you were asking for public, from public servants, which was valid, 